Hi, and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Amy Moyer. I'm the Vice President of Field Operations here at Action for Healthy Kids. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hopefully, you can all see my screen and hear my voice. If you can, if you just can enter something into the chat box to say, hey, we hear you, I would really appreciate it, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, today, over the course of the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the Action for Healthy Kids School Health Portal. This is a uh, technology that we have produced with user feedback from schools. So we're actually very excited to be able to launch it. It's been launched about, I'd say, 8 to, to 10 months. And now that we've worked out all the bugs, we're really excited to be able to help schools and other individuals navigate the portal. And that's what we'll focus on for today's session. As I mentioned, my name is uh, Amy Moyer. I'm the Vice President of Field Operations here at Action for Healthy Kids. I've been with the organization now almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years in February and lead our field operations department. So before we begin, I just want to make sure everybody fully understands how to use our technology. So we are using what's called GoToWebinar technology. And this means that all participants are currently in muted mode. This is just to help make sure that all users have a good learning experience. We don't hear the shuffling of papers, the finishing of lunch. Uh, and you know other background noise. So everyone will be muted throughout the course of the, the, the call today. However, there is an opportunity for you to ask questions whenever you feel the need by using the control panel on your screen. In the question box, go ahead and just ask your question as it comes, and I will save some time at the end to answer any questions you may have. So don't feel like you have to take notes. Uh, just jot your questions down right away in that box, and we will be happy to answer them here before the end of the session. Lastly, too, this call is going to be recorded, and handouts and the recording will be sent to you following the session. So if you want to share it, if you want to just sit back and relax and not take a lot of notes, feel free to do so. We are going to be following up with some information for you uh, after today's session. So before we begin, I wanted to give you a little background on Action for Healthy Kids, just to make sure you are familiar with the organization. Our vision is a world in which every kid is healthy, is active, and is ready to learn. We're an organization that mobilizes people. We mobilize school professionals, families, students, and communities to take actions that lead to healthy eating, physical activity, and healthier schools where kids thrive. So our focus is obesity, undernourishment, and children's uh, ability to learn in the classroom environment. Our goal is to create uh, school communities where the minute they step on school campus to the minute in which they leave, there's opportunities for them to experience health and wellness. So whether that be classroom parties, or the, having the opportunity to try healthy foods, or physical activity instead of some of the more traditional class or party types of foods. From after school programs, are the after school programs sedentary? Is there an opportunity to make them more physically active? So we really look at all of the school day and where are there opportunities to infuse health and physical activity so that kids really experience and learn through the behavior about how to live a healthy lifestyle. Today, we're going to focus on in the weeds, so really kind of that big nebulous health and wellness, kids ready to thrive in the classroom environment, how we get there. One of the ways that we get there is through our Action for Healthy Kids School Health Portal. So the Action for Healthy Kids School Health Portal was built based on school feedback. We've been giving grants to schools since about 2009. We've been doing trainings and conferences with schools even before that. And throughout the years, the schools have been telling us, you know, sure it would be nice to have a one-stop shop where we can apply for grants, we can fill out surveys and get immediate results, build action plans, and otherwise just have one place where we can house and manage all of our school's health and wellness needs. So over the last several years, that's what we've been working to build. We've been working to build this one-stop shop. And I'm really excited to kind of showcase it today for you you'll learn how to apply for a school grant. And within this portal, you'll also see that all of the reports that you're required to complete as part of the grant are within the system. So you're not getting different links. You're not having to fill out various paper applications or reports. 
you're not having to go to different systems to complete uh, individual reports at different times. It's all housed within the School Health Portal. You'll also see, I'll walk you through how to complete this Action for Healthy Kids version of the School Health Index. I'll show you some reports. You get immediate results on all the, the survey components, and we'll walk you through how you can use those results to showcase your efforts in your school. You can also build a customized action plan. So we'll talk through what your action plan may look like, or our, for example, our school that we'll, walk, we'll work through what their gaps are and how they can address those gaps in their action plan. And then lastly, one of our other Action for Healthy Kids initiatives is, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, we empower people. So schools often can't do it alone, and they need additional helping hands to help them uh, implement nutrition and physical activity programs. So through our volunteer network, there's an opportunity to find folks who are skilled and able to provide your school with some additional support to implement health and nutrition initiatives. So without further ado, I'm going to jump off of the PowerPoint and get to the website here. Just give me a second. All right, so hopefully, if you're on this call, you likely are already pretty, pretty familiar with Action for Healthy Kids and our website. But here's our main page. And in order to get to our school health portal, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Most of the time, it's going to be here through the Tools for Schools section. This is where predominantly most of our program materials are for schools. You can get to the School Health Portal through applying for grants. If you want to learn a little bit more about what grants are available through Action for Healthy Kids, you can read up on information about the kinds of grants we make available to schools and then gain access to our school portal through this grants page. Or you can gain access in a couple of ways through our signature program called Game On. Game On is a six-step process that we work with schools to incorporate uh, that help eventually gets them recognized as a health-promoting school through a couple of national, national recognition programs. So within Game On, you can see there's six steps here, and there's a couple of ways you can get to the school portal. I'm going to show you how to get there through step two. Step, through, step two is where the school is completing their school health index. So if you're not familiar with the school health index, we have Actually Really Kids has partnered with CDC uh, to adopt the School Health Index on our website. School Health Index has been around for several years, decades even, and it's really the best of the best when it comes to helping your school determine where it stands with health and nutrition ideals. Uh, where are you with implementing recess? Where are you with uh, after-school snack programs? And then how does that stack up with what's recommended by the CDC? So the School Health Index is a really powerful assessment tool that helps your school identify where you are strong and your opportunities for improvement. So we'll spend quite a bit of time today walking through uh, that process so you'll see it on the portal. So here, through step two of Game On, you can access the Action for Healthy Kids School Health Portal. It's free to log in. It's free to create an account, as you can see, even with the, the web uh, web. Um, Technology that I use, it even saves my password for me. I use uh, Firefox, so it saves passwords for you pretty easily. You can create an account for right here very quickly. Just enter your username, your password, and then if you're new to the system, it asks you to uh, enter your name and your uh, first and last name, just a little bit more information about you, and then you click Submit, and you have an account with the Action for Healthy Kids School Health Portal. So it's pretty easy. I'm actually not going to register here or log in here because this takes us to the live site. The demo I'm going to do is going to be in our staging environment. That way we're not actually submitting data to a real school. So this is in our, uh, our testing environment, and that's what we'll walk through today. It's exactly like what you'll see on the front end of your, uh, your user access. It just will be, again, not with a live school. So it's all test data that we're building here. This is our sandbox. It's our play box. So when you log into the School Health Portal, this is the page that you see. You can see up here how many grants have been awarded by Action for Healthy Kids, the number of schools, what that means in terms of dollars, how many schools have completed School Health Index. So there's some interesting stats on where you stand compared to other schools that are using the School Health Portal. You can read a little bit of information about all the things you can do within the School Health Portal. 
risk, and I'll kind of walk you through many of those things today. Here's kind of a quick and dirty uh, one, steps one, two, three, and four to help you get started. You can complete your profile, which we'll do in a minute. One of the most important parts of being able, being successful with the school health portal is finding your school, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, making sure you're connected to your school and the system. And then we'll work through the School Health Index and even uh, Chuck to talk you through how to apply for a grant. So first up, let's complete our profile. This is real simple information. You don't have, even have to include all the details if you don't want to. Who are you? Just tell us a little bit more about you. Why are you interested in Action for Healthy Kids? I'm interested in Action for Healthy Kids because I'm applying for a grant as part of the PTA in my child's school. So I'm going to enter, enter that there. You can include some additional detail if you'd like. It's, again, it's not required. If you are a volunteer or would like to volunteer with any of the events that we'll post in the system, you can also tell us a little bit more about what your skill sets may be, and that is helpful for us to help match you up with the school in need. Once you've completed filling out your profile information, you just hit Update Profile. Fairly easy. The most important step, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, in, in really using this portal successfully is to connect yourself with your school. So you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can use the sidebar tool right here that says Add or Manage Schools, or you can click on the My Schools tab over here. This is how you add your schools to your specific account. So basically what you're doing here is you are connecting your name to your school. And that way, as you apply for grants and complete assessments, you are filling it out as a representative of your school in the database. And it's helping to create those linkages. These are the schools that I already have connections with. So a Maple, Cedar, White Oak, Pine Tree. These are the schools that are already affiliated with my account. The red X is there just so you can very easily delete it if you're no longer affiliated with that school. To add additional schools to your profile, it's actually quite simple. You type in a zip code. You search schools. And these are the schools in that district. This happens to be Avon District. That's just outside of Indianapolis, Indiana. And you can affiliate yourself with schools in the district you aren't already affiliated with. So had I not been affiliated with any schools, all of those schools here would be listed up top. So because I'm already affiliated with them in that district, they're listed down here, and only those I'm not affiliated with now are listed in this section here. To add a school, find your school in the system. Uh, my daughter is now in middle school, so I am now affiliated with Avon Middle School. I add selected, and Avon Middle School is now listed as one of my affiliated schools. Any school in the database, it should be in the system. There's 130,000 schools in the country. All 130,000 schools of them are here in the system. There are a couple of exceptions. Private schools, uh, schools whose names have changed in the last year, redistricted schools, you, you may on occasion not find your school in the system. If that is the case, if it's a brand new school, uh, charter school, et cetera, there's a form right over here on the left, on the right hand side that you can fill out and submit to us and we'll get your school added for you and then uh, you can proceed from there. Again, vast majority of schools should all be in the system with just a simple zip code search. So once you've affiliated yourself with schools, uh, one other point I'll make, you can, obviously you can affiliate yourself with multiple schools. So if you're a district administrator or if you are a public health professional or state agency staff member who's working with multiple schools in a district, you can uh, affiliate yourself with multiple schools and apply for grants and complete the School Health Index on behalf of those multiple schools. So there are options for that, which we'll show you here in a minute. If you are just affiliated with a single school, of course you can do that as well and fill out our applications for just that particular school. So either way is absolutely possible within this system. So now that we have completed affiliating ourselves with the school, you start to see down here that I've already started filling out some information for schools in this particular district. As you do so, you'll, you can scroll down from this main screen and start to see the different programs that your schools are already involved in. 
Crystal Maple Elementary. They have a universal breakfast grant application in progress. We've started the process of completing the School Health Index for White Oak Elementary, and you can move through the process there as well. It's kind of a shortcut navigational option for you here on the screen. Let's first dive into school grants. So at the moment, our school grants processes are closed. We actually just closed our fall cycle. Um, uh, the grant cycle will open again in February. So if you are a school who's very interested in applying for a grant for after school programs, for brain breaks, or classroom energizers, for healthy snacks, or um, vending machines for breakfast, Take a look at the grant opportunities that we typically make available. It's something we will offer again come February 2017, and obviously we would very much like to see an application from as many schools as we can. I'll kind of walk you through one particular example. The first one here is a Game On grant. So I select Game On. I find out a little bit more about this particular grant. Uh, it helps provide funding for physical activity initiatives and nutrition initiatives, such as school gardens, et cetera. It tells you exactly what it is you have to do as part of this grant. So with this particular grant, our goal is to increase the number of physical activity minutes by at least 10% over the course of the school year and advance school nutrition environment in some significant way. We're also working towards a Healthier U.S. Schools Challenge certification, so helping your school become a health-promoting, recognized health-promoting school. So you can read a little bit more about this particular grant. Now, this school that I, am select, that I have selected is in Indiana. As you can see here, Iowa, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin are the only states where this grant is applicable. So if I'm a school in Indiana and I select this grant, it's going to tell me that you are not eligible for this opportunity. So this is a fail-safe. If you select a grant, you will see right away that this is not something your school is eligible for. So you can go back to uh, another grant opportunity and more clearly identify one that's eligible for your school. Here, the Universal Breakfast Grant, it is available in all states, including Indiana, so I know I can begin a grant application here. You'll see right away, for those of you who work with multiple schools, we do have an opportunity for you to submit an application for multiple schools. If you're a food service director or, again, a district administrator or state agency partner, you're submitting a grant for a breakfast program, you can submit for multiple schools. So that is an option. I'm going to walk through today just the single school option. So once you select to start a grant, identify which school it is you are looking to complete. Maple's grayed out because they've already started a grant application for Maple. I'm not able to start a second one. So again, another fail safe. Let's, we're going to apply for Cedar Elementary School. From there, it's pretty simple. Fill in the blanks. Now, usually when we send out a grant application and do recruiting for school grants, we also supply a paper version of the application. That way you can fill in the details, work with your project team, get the appropriate approvals, approvals you need at the school building level, and then once you actually log in, it's just copy and paste from there. So I'm not going to walk through the details of our grant application at this time. Just know it's essentially fill in the blank and you'll have your paper application completely filled out so that when you get to the online portal, it should really only take you about 20 or 30 minutes to fill in all the details and hit submit. Once you have completed a grant application, it's going to tell you your grant application is complete. And then once Action for Healthy Kids as awarded, that particular grant application, it will tell you that it's been funded or awarded. And that way you will be able to identify uh, the schools that received grants and then review the application so that you remember what it is you applied for. Again, this is also a great place for you to complete reports and uh, uh, do any other management you'd like to do with your school grants initiatives. A lot of times schools ask us for a copy of the grant application. 
So once it is submitted for you uh, and funded, it is something you can do through the portal. You can go in and simply print off a version of the application so you can share it with other members of your school health team. As I mentioned, school grants, uh, we will open those again come February. So we'll do more of a thorough review at that point to help schools navigate the grant portal. For now, since it's closed, I'm not going to spend a significant amount of time on it just because you'll probably forget between now and then. So I want to spend a little bit of time looking at the School Health Index. So as I mentioned, the School Health Index is an online self-assessment tool that really helps you identify where you're strong and when it comes to nutrition and physical activity programs in your school building and what your areas of improvement need to be. CDC has uh, used the School Health Index again for decades and it's the best of the best survey out there for school health and wellness. It is long. There are over 100 questions on it, but it's broken out into eight different sections. So you can pull in the appropriate people and the appropriate team members to help you fill it out. As you can see here with White Oak Elementary, I've already filled out six, seven of the eight modules or sections of the School Health Index. I have completed Module 2, Health Education, Module 3, Physical Education and Physical Activity Programs, nutrition services, school health services, school counseling, uh, health promotion for staff, and family and community involvement. We'll fill out module one together. One of the other really cool things that you can do with the school health portal is invite other individuals to help complete this school health index with you. You don't have to fill out all 100 questions, all eight sections together. If you are the food service director, you may only fill out section four, because that's the section that most applies to you. But you may have a physical education teacher complete the questions that have to do with physical education and physical activity programs. And you may have the school nurse help complete the school health services question. So this is absolutely built and designed so that team members can work together to complete the full school health index. So how do you do that? Here on your My Schools page, let me back up, make sure I'm doing this for the right school, uh, White Oak Elementary. Um, here on your My Schools page, you can start to manage your schools more specifically. So I'm working with White Oak Elementary. Here are individuals that are on your wellness team. Right now, we just have our test person. Hannah is our test person in this particular school, White Oak Elementary. If you want to invite the school nurse, the PE teacher, district administrators, principals, uh, counselors, anyone else to your team to help you complete some sections of the school health index or grant applications, you can do that by selecting the star, invite more peers to collaborate with you, and inviting them very simply by adding their first name, last name, and their email. These individuals will get uh, a, an email. This is in the test environment, so that's why it failed. But these individuals will get an email that they have to verify and confirm that they want to be a part of this school. And then from there, you will see, once they have accepted your invitation, you will see their name added to this list. This will give them access to all of the questions and uh, information that you see in your school portal. So, this is done in a collaborative environment, which is great. So again, School Health Index, 100 plus questions. Does not mean that Hannah has to fill out all 100 questions. She can have a list of 10 people that are also completing their portions of the School Health Index. And this really makes this a team and collaborative environment. So let's say, for example, we've got our school health and wellness team. We've completed seven of the eight school health index modules, and we want to fill out the last module so we can see our all eight module report. Filling out the module itself is actually pretty easy. You ask, the questions are listed right there. It defines the answer options for you. So does your school have a representative health team? Yes, they meet at least four times a year. 
Uh, no, we have a team, but they could be more representative. They could have that more diverse individuals on the team. Or there is a team, but it's not representative, or we don't meet more than four times a year. <clears throat> so depending on what your answer is, you select number three, number two, number one, or zero. Similarly situated, the other questions are done in very much the same way. Three, two, one, zero. It asks the question. It tells you the definition of the answer. So I'm going to quickly just run through this, sort of select somewhat of a random answers so you can get a sense for how the reports play out. Obviously, if you're going to spend some time filling out a survey assessment that has over 100 questions, you're going to want to see some pretty sophisticated reporting. Really help you understand where your school is, what are their areas of strength, what are their areas of opportunity, and then guide you on how to improve those areas of opportunity. This module happens to be the longest module, so don't get messed, uh, don't get scared by the length of the module here. I recognize that it is long. Um, it is the longest one of the eight. Okay, and once you scroll down to the last question, you can either save your progress. This does not submit your report as final. So if you come in and you fill out, let's say, maybe half of these questions, and you need your food service director to come in and fill out the other half, you send her a note. You say, hey, I've started module one. I need you to go in and finish the rest of those questions. That person can then come in here, enter in the rest of the answers, and then you can submit it once you're in it, completely done with all the questions as a team. So I'm going to submit this report. There may be a couple of additional questions that we've added to help us understand the school's uh, readiness to apply for healthier school recognition programs. So I hit submit, and right away you are given reports to find out how it is you are doing. So here's the list of the questions. You can, you can view them in pie charts. You can view print-friendly versions of the reports. This is just your modular, module report, so just module one report. You can see here that you scored 48 out of 60. You're trending upwards. You're doing pretty well. It lists your opportunities for growth. So some of those questions that you scored low in, it's going to include down here on the bottom. And then it's also going to help supply those directly into your action plan, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. If you wanted to print off the report so that you can share it with administrators or team members, you can do that. So you hit the print module button, and then you can print from there. You can also view detailed results by getting a full understanding of all of the ways that you answered the question. So let's say, for example, you, went, uh, you couldn't remember how you answered the question. Like, what did I, what were the answers or what were the questions and how did I answer them? You can answer, you can ask for detailed information to get more detail of how you actually filled out the report. So this is a great uh, way for you to get real-time immediate results for your module. So now we've completed all eight modules within the School Health Index for White Oak Elementary. I want to see how I did on all of the modules. I want to view my total School Health Index results for all eight modules. If you go back to your school hub, so again, you've got your wellness team over here. You've completed all eight modules of the School Health Index and click View My Total School Health Index Results. You're going to see a comprehensive report of how it is you did. So here is the max score versus your score for all eight modules across the, the school health index. You can see in module two, you scored 23 out of 30 points. So you're close. The school was close. In module five, we scored 13 out of 13 points. So we hit some of our modules. We actually did a really good job in, at scoring. You also notice that we've got some placeholders for state averages and district averages. As more schools enter information into the School Health Index, we're going to make this available to you. So if schools in your district 
several schools in your district complete the School Health Index, you'll be able to see on this trend chart where you compare with those schools. As more schools fill out the School Health Index in your state, again, another line, another color will be added. That way you can see exactly how it is you, you stack up against other schools in your state. In total, you scored 208 out of 258 points. And then you can see your modular scores here at the bottom. So again, real time, real results uh, immediately after you complete the School Health Index. From here, so you're thinking, so what? So now I've got this, these scores. Now I've got, I can see my areas of strength and areas of opportunity in each one of my modules. What do I do with this? So here is a tool that Action for Healthy Kids is helping to produce now on the what next. What do I do with this information? Based on your results of the School Health Index, based on your opportunities for improvement, uh, Action for Healthy Kids built this action plan such that it addresses your needs on the School Health Index. So you aren't going to have to remember that you were, sufficient, you were deficient in let's say module two, well, what was I deficient in? You aren't going to have to remember to carry those over to your action plan. The system does it automatically. So any area where you are you're deficient in certain areas, it's going to get automatically carried over into this action plan. And you can see here, based on our School Health Index results, I can add certain actions that I was lower in on the, when I completed the School Health Index. So I scored low on teaching a comprehensive standards-based nutrition education curriculum, and I want to address it as part of this year's action plan. I also scored low around teaching standards-based lifetime fitness and physical education curriculum and offering breakfast and several others. I can identify which actions I want to add to our action plan. By no means do you have to add all of them. So your school health team may say, well, actually, for this year, we're not going to be able to meet SMART SNAC standards. That's something we'll have to address next school year. So you don't necessarily need to collect, uh, select that button now. So identify the actions that you want to work on as a school health team. Once you've selected all of those uh, that you desire, you add them to your action plan. And from here, you can manage it. So if you've completed it, you can hit the checkbox. If you'd like to add some more details about who is doing what, are volunteers needed, who is the owner from your school health team. So Hannah's right now, again, a lonely person, but let's pretend there's several people on the school health team who owns this particular activity. This is an action plan that you can manipulate on an ongoing basis. So it's a live action plan that helps you manage the activities of your school health team. Once an action has been completed, you can then go and uh, see it on your completed actions plan. So as soon as I hit complete, that action goes away. I can then go, though, and hit a filter that allows me to see those actions that I have completed. This is great for a school health team. You know, as they're proceeding throughout the course of the year and they tick off several of these actions, it will be great towards the end of the year to uh, unhide those completed actions and just see all that you've accomplished over the course of the year. You can also, if you get through all the activities for this year and you would like to take a look at those other actions that we didn't select, you can select uh, the additional actions as you have time to do so. And then lastly with this particular action plan, if you have the desire to add your own actions, you can certainly do that. So very similar to the way uh, the actions are that are already in the system, you can design your own. So let's say you want to build a walk to school program, and, but you scored high on it on the School Health Index, so it didn't pop up for you. You want to have a bike rodeo. You can insert, host a bike rodeo. Start date is going to be April 15. It's going to end on May uh, third, actually May 10th, because I think um, bike to school day is like May 5th or something. Hannah's going to own it. I, uh, volunteers are going to be needed. And I'm going to measure this by the number of attendees at the bike rodeo. Uh, let me fix my dates here. Mm. 
I have a bug in the testing environment. It may not want to accept my date, which is unfortunate, during a live webinar. So once that I get the dates entered in there the right way, uh, I'll make a note to fix that little bug there. Uh, you can see that my bike rodeo is now in my action plan. I can edit and management from here and uh, select it as done once it's completed. One of the other features we are working on is allowing you to print your action plan. Right now, we're not quite satisfied with the way that it looks. As you can see, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome in this current format, so it's something that we're working on with our tech team to make it a little bit easier to understand. You can print it off. It's just not as clean as what we want it to be eventually, but it's a great tool. So all in all, the School Health Index and the Action Plan tools really help your school assess its environment and ensures that you're focusing on the right areas for an improvement. The last thing I want to share with you as part of the School Health Portal is our Events tab. As I mentioned, Action for Healthy Kids, one of the, the initiatives that we do is we train volunteers across the country to help work with schools, so parents, community members. We have partners in all states, state agency staff, public health professionals who want to work with schools that just need to know what schools need help. So Action for Healthy Kids, uh, provides technology that allows schools to post opportunities to the environment and allows volunteers to sign up for them. This could include taste tests. If you're hosting a taste test for uh, K through four kids and you need volunteers to come in and slice fruit and you can't get enough PTO or PTA members, there, are, there could be volunteers in your community that could come in and help you do that. You post an event. If you are looking for um, individuals from the community to be a part of your school health team. You can post an event. Uh, for the bike rodeo, if you need volunteers, you can post an event. These events can be either single day events, so one time occurring, or on um, multiple times. So your school health team, for example, it's a reoccurring meeting the first Wednesday of every month, and you want a volunteer to come be a part of that team, you can post a reoccurring meeting. It's actually pretty simple. You can see here, uh, you hit request an event. You enter all of the information you want to uh, include for this particular event. So we select a school, so these are the schools that we are affiliated with. So if you don't see the school that you want on the list, make sure that you go back to your school's profile and get the right school added. A simple zip code search will fix your issue. I'm going to select Maple Elementary. The name, uh, actually it was White Oak, I think we completed it for the School Health Index. Uh, bike Rodeo, it's a school health team event. The start date is May 3rd, the end date is May 3rd. I need volunteers from 10 o'clock in the morning to noon central time. Need volunteers to help route students around our bike course. Uh, the address is 600 You have the option with this portal to help decide whether or not you want our help in managing your events. So we can help manage your registration. If you would rather not have it done over paper or done in the office, this technology can help you manage your volunteers right here on the site. So say you want assistance with managing volunteers. We'll send your volunteers reminders. You know, you have to help us to identify how that's done, but this technology can definitely help you uh, manage your events. Yes, I do need volunteers. Uh, you do have to agree to our waiver, which you have access to looking at right there, and uh, can then submit your actual event. This event is now posted in our system as requested. Uh, somebody on staff, as soon as it's been submitted, it takes about 24 hours for us to go in, make sure that you're a real person with a real event, 
that um, you know you're not you're not looking to uh, host a pizza party necessarily, but you're hosting a bike rodeo, so it has to be somewhat of a health-focused event. We will approve this event, and then it gets posted online for all to see. You have the option to edit and manage your event directly from your events page here on the web portal. So outside of that, it's a pretty fairly it's a fairly easy uh, technology to use. If you have uh, if you don't have an events management tool at your school, I know some schools do, some do not, and you're still relying on the office to take down names for who's going to volunteer for certain events or PTA or PTO members. If they're still uh, organizing their volunteers on paper or through Excel, highly encourage you to check out this technology. It makes it so much easier. So um, give it a try and see how it works with your school environment. And then lastly, there's a help section. So depending on what your issue is, we do have frequently asked questions. If you had questions on school grants, I submitted a grant application last year, but I can't log in. Can my school apply for both a breakfast and a game on grant? Who has access or who is eligible to apply? You know, all of the questions we get very regularly around our grant applications. Many of those answers you can find here in the help section under frequently asked questions. There's also some tutorials here around the school health index as well as other particular areas. We, again, we've really tried to make this uh, school health portal a one-stop shop that allows you to be autonomous in your work, but it gives you real-time feedback in very specific ways. So a couple of other resources I do want to mention, and then I will open it up for questions. Additional resources that you may find beneficial from Action for Healthy Kids. So Action for Healthy Kids has state coordinators. There are state coordinators in about 24 states, but they, some of the state coordinators do oversee multiple states. So if you have questions about Action for Healthy Kids resources or want to know more about uh, how to apply for a grant or what grants are going to be available to you in your state, reach out to our Action for Healthy Kids state coordinators. Again, these, these web addresses will be sent to you after today's session, so don't feel like you have to write, write down that long, gnarly URL. We also offer webinars. Uh, we offer webinars on a monthly basis. These days, they're more like weekly, so we've got a topic about every week or two that we are uh, providing to the country. All of them are free of charge. We go through best practices in health and nutrition, as well as have other schools share their success stories on what's working well for them and their environment. As I mentioned too, obviously we do have school grants as well. It will be available in February 2017, so keep an eye out for what opportunities uh, your school may be eligible for when that time comes. You can also follow Action for Healthy Kids through our social media accounts. We have very active users on Facebook and uh, Twitter. We also see activity on our YouTube channel. That's where all of our archived webinars are stored. So if you have not, if you can't attend a session or you missed one that you found that we hosted a few weeks ago, go to our YouTube channel and you'll find access to all of the webinars that we've hosted and we'll be able to view it right, right there on the website. We're also doing a lot more with Twitter, Instagram, and Flickr as well. If you really want to um, get more engaged with the organization and, and learn about some classroom activities that you can do around health and wellness, I encourage you to check out some of those social accounts. So lastly, any questions that anyone has regarding the use of the School Health Portal? So we reviewed how to log into the School Health Portal. We reviewed how to affiliate yourself with your school. So through an easy zip code search, you're finding your school and you're selecting your, that school and connecting it to your name in the database. We also learned how to manage our school grants, complete a school health index assessment, read our reports through the school health index, and then build our action plan based on our results. And lastly, we learned how to build volunteer opportunities. Hopefully, all of that was pretty self-explanatory, and perhaps, since there are no questions, it was. So uh, what last chance for questions. I really encourage you to take a look at the School Health Portal. At a bare minimum, start playing around with the School Health Index. If you make mistakes and you submit the module before it's 
done, or you, you were just playing around with it like I was, and entering answers just so you could see how the system works, just send us an email and say, hey, shoot, I actually submitted too early. Uh, can you delete the answers in my module one? I was just playing around. We can absolutely do that. It's not a big deal. Uh, we can delete your, your module, and you can start over from scratch. If you're having any issues at all with uh, connecting people to your wellness team, let's say, for example, you're sending them emails, but for some reason, invitations, they're not getting the invitations. Maybe it's a spam filter or something else. Uh, just connect with us, and we can certainly help you work through those issues as well. If you're a public health professional or a district administrator and you want to walk through how to complete a school health assessment or a grant application on behalf of multiple schools, we've built a system that's such that it's pretty self-sufficient, but if you have issues, certainly connect with us and we'll be happy to uh, walk you through the process as well. So hopefully you find great value in the use of this technology. We sure have enjoyed building it, um, and uh, we've gotten some wonderful feedback already on schools that are using the system. So definitely get in there and play around with it and begin managing your school's health and wellness needs through this Action for Kids School Health Portal. Really appreciate your time today. Uh, this can now concludes our call. And again, as I mentioned, we'll follow up with uh, any handouts, recordings, and the PowerPoint slides, you can review them again as you so choose and share them with others. So thank you again for your time. We appreciate your uh, participation today. Have a good day.